Hello everyone and welcome to Edu Surge Clinics where we discuss some key topics related to common medical and surgical practice. Now this has been a very important update of this year and what was known as fatty liver is now undergoing a significant change in the terminology as well as the spectrum of diseases that are involved and the new nomenclature that has been proposed by the consensus that is published in 2023 is steatotic liver disease. In a nutshell, steatotic liver disease has been proposed to encompass the different clinical presentations of these people from one end of the spectrum where they, they got a fatty liver as an ultrasound diagnosis with no symptoms at all to a center of the spectrum where they have metabolic syndrome or what is now termed as metabolic dysfunction to the far extreme of the spectrum where the patients have significant risk factors such as alcohol, obesity as well as fatty food consumption, viral infections and so on which has led to steatotic liver disease. So now let us see this in medical terminology that has been proposed. This is the article of 2023 published recently in the Journal of Hepatology. Important reasons that have been cited for this change include removal of stigma associated with fatty liver. Okay, The term steatotic liver disease is non-stigmatizing, something like osteoporosis. The other important point is, as we discussed in the previous slide, the entire spectrum of diverse etiologies is covered and not only the fat. Okay as is proposed by the term fatty liver. This spectrum also covers the aspect of coexisting alcohol and fatty liver, which is very important because practically it is very routinely seen in our clinics that these patients have multiple risk factors. So when we have a unifying spectrum of liver disease and a clear nomenclature like the current one, it facilitates the inclusion criteria. There is more real world data collection and this facilitates the trials for drug development, right? So in a nutshell, this is the spectrum that has been proposed by the 2023 Delphi consensus. Theatotic liver disease is divided into predominantly two parts, okay, as we will see in the upcoming slides. And then these parts are subdivided. So we have the MASLD or the metabolic dysfunction associated steatotic liver disease. We have the MASLD with alcohol, the coexistent group, which can be alcohol predominant or metabolic dysfunction predominant based on the alcohol intake. On other side, you have specific etiologies which lead to steatotic liver disease such as alcohol, drug-induced liver injury, genetic diseases such as lysosomal acid lipase deficiency, Wilson disease, inborn errors of metabolism, as well as other steatotic liver disease such as hepatitis C virus related liver disease, malnutrition and celiac disease. And lastly, we have the cryptogenic steatotic liver disease. As we go into the past, we know that metabolic syndrome has been associated with the previously known fatty liver. I would just highlight that there were five key points that were associated with metabolic syndrome. Okay. And the diagnosis rests on presence of three or more criteria of these five criteria, which is obesity, which is waist circumference, blood glucose by the fasting glucose or the glucose tolerance test, triglycerides, which should be high and low HDL and high blood pressure or hypertension or treatment of any of these, which is ongoing. So this is the basic metabolic syndrome. Now, the definitions can be three or more criteria that are present. The other way of defining this is obesity should be present and two or more of the other four criteria should be present. When we go into the spectrum that has been proposed in 2023, the metabolic dysfunction and not the metabolic syndrome, this is important, and metabolic dysfunction has been described as the presence of at least one of the five cardiometabolic risk factors. Now, this is a very important change to understand and remember. Now, as per this article, the cardiometabolic risk factors of one out of five 
again includes the same points that are there in the metabolic syndrome. But the criteria of cardiometabolic risk has changed from at least three criteria to now only one out of five criteria to label these patients as having cardiometabolic risk. This is the important point that we need to highlight. So now when these patients present to our clinic with an say ultrasound suggesting fatty liver or a biopsy which shows fatty liver or steatotic liver disease as it is now known, the important point is does the patient meet cardiometabolic criteria? And this red part is what we have seen in our presentation so far that the patient has at least one cardiometabolic criteria, okay? And this is where we get the diagnosis of MASLD or metabolic dysfunction associated steatotic liver disease. And if there is another cause such as alcohol or drug induced or genetic disorder, then it is metabolic dysfunction with alcohol related liver disease or combination etiology. And this is the part that has been shown in this beautiful chart by this red box. Okay. So I think this part is clear. Now we go to the other side. This is the side where the patients do not have cardiometabolic risk factors. You look at the causes of steatosis, which may be alcohol, may be drugs, may be celiac disease, may be hepatitis C virus, may be inborn errors of metabolism. And then that will be the cause of steatotic liver disease in that patient, right? If none of these factors are present and there is no cardiometabolic criteria, then your patient is labeled as cryptogenic steatotic liver disease. So this is the gray part of the spectrum and that is why this color change is very nicely given in this article. So to summarize, a patient comes to you with an imaging or a biopsy diagnosis of steatotic liver disease. First thing you assess is the cardiometabolic risk factor. If the risk factors are there, at least one of five, then it is metabolic dysfunction. The patient can have metabolic dysfunction associated steatotic liver disease. If there is coexisting alcohol, then the patient has metabolic dysfunction with alcohol related liver disease. If there is other etiology that is present, then it is combination etiology. The steatohepatitis terminology is still retained. So you can have metabolic dysfunction associated steatohepatitis based on the fibrosis score. If your patient does not have cardiometabolic risk factors, then look at the other etiologies and that is how you will label the steatotic liver disease in these patients. And if the patient has no cardiometabolic risk factors and no identifiable etiology to steatotic liver disease, then your patient has cryptogenic steatotic liver disease. Thank you.